Okay, this is a software demonstration of Excel's regression uh, routine. I just finished recording it once and got to the end and forgot how to do something and messed it all up, so I'm having to record it all over again. So uh, if I make mistakes this time, we're just going to go with them. Okay, so we got our old uh, friend here, the uh, data set on home prices. And what I'm going to show you how to do is to compute the regression model that I showed you in the earlier lecture. And this regression model predicts the price of the house as a function of the square feet. So let's get over to the columns we're going to be working with. We got price, that's going to be our output variable. And square feet of living space is going to be our input variable. So for first, uh, let's select data, data analysis, and we're going to pick regression and say OK. And since I just got through screwing it up, I've already got all of the inputs in there, so I'm going to clear those out so I can kind of walk you through them as, as we go through and tell you what it is we're doing. OK, so the first variable is the output that's our y variable. The y range will be what it is we're trying to predict. So in this case, it's going to be the price. And notice that I included the header as part of the input. Uh, so that way I will get a label on the output when I uh, do my regression. And now I've got to tell it the input variable and that's the X that I'm going to be using to predict price. And that's in that column. And again, I have to be consistent here. If I use a label for one column, I have to do it for all of them. So now I've got the input range, the output range, and I'm going, I'm going to click right there again. It was already clicked, but I'll just go through the motions to tell it that that first row is the label of the variable that, that's in that row. And then for the output options, again, I'm going to let it put this on a separate worksheet. If I wanted to, I could highlight an area uh, on this page and, and put it there. And then I'm going to tell it to do several things. I'm going to tell it I want it to compute residuals. Now, just to keep you all confused really well, residuals is just another word for errors. So it's going to compute the errors. And it's also going to standardize those errors. In other words, divide them by the standard error so you can look and see which ones are one standard deviation or one standard error, which ones are two standard errors away from the predicted value and three standard errors and all of that. And then I'm actually going to plot those errors so I can look and see, do small houses have smaller errors than big houses or, you know, those kinds of things. And the most important one is this one right here, which is the line fit plots. That's where it actually plots the regression line uh, on top of your scatter diagram of home prices versus uh, square feet. So now we're all ready and we'll click OK, and here's our output. So the output over here is what we've already talked about in the lecture. You have uh, R, multiple R, R squared, adjusted R squared. Remember, I told you to always use that one. The standard error, which is the standard deviation, or the root mean squared error how much the individual home prices vary around the prediction line or the regression equation. This information in this part of the chart uh, we really don't need right now, but down here is the, where we get the actual regression model. The intercept and the slope or the coefficient of square foot living. You can also, if, if you knew that when your input variable is going to be zero, uh, you can tell it, uh, if, if you know that when your input variable is zero, your y should also be zero, 
which is sometimes the case, it's not here, a house with zero square feet doesn't sell for zero dollars because the lot is part of the package there. Uh, but you could force it to make that intercept zero. There was a uh, option on the uh, sheet there that would allow you to do that. We may, we'll probably have situations sometime this semester where we, we will be doing that. And down here is that other information that I talked to you about. You remember the standard error was $57,000 or in that general range. And that tells us the standard deviation of the prediction error. And down here are the individual prediction errors. So we have each observation, and these are just in the same order in which they were listed. And if you wanted to get your observations printed out, say, in in order of price or in order of square feet, you could have sorted your data before you ran your regression. It wouldn't have changed your regression model, but it would change the order in which this output appears. So here for observation one, it says, here's the predicted price that you get if you plug the square foot of that very first house into the regression model. Here is the residual or the error. In other words, we take the actual price and subtract the price that we predicted, and we get a difference of $43,000. And then if we divide that by the standard error, which was, you know, 50 some thousand dollars, it says that's about uh, three-fourths of a, a 0.75 standard errors away from the predicted value. And if you want to look for the you know, the big ones, there is a error that's 2.45 standard errors. And if you want to look for the outliers, you would scroll down through here and look for the ones where the uh, standardized, the standardized residual is bigger than three. I don't see one offhand, but there, there I believe uh, there's one right there. That house had a, uh, predicted price of $463,000, but the actual price was $176,000 more than that, and that's three standard errors, uh, or three, three residuals away from what was predicted. The actual was about three standard errors larger than what was predicted. So I've talked really too much about that because we're not going to be focusing on that uh, today, right here are uh, the two most interesting things. This is a plot of the residual versus square feet. And when you look at that, you don't see anything that you're too concerned about. Now, you would be uh, interested if you noticed that this was funnel shaped. For example, you get really small errors. What this plot is showing you is for the different square feet of houses these are the errors that we made in predicting. And if, if you got smaller errors at 1,000 square feet than you did at 2,000 square feet, and, and even larger errors at 3,000 or 4,000, that would be of interest to you. And that might affect the way you work with your data. And down here is the plot that you would most likely pretty up and put in your report. And this is just a basic uh, Excel uh, chart, so you can do things with it. And one thing that I would recommend you always do with it is for some reason Excel plots the regression line as points rather than as a, a solid line. So I, I usually go in, uh, double click on that, and then when I get over here and I look at the, the uh, Thing. I, I go to line and I say let's put a line in there and let's make that line black and then when I look at the markers I say for the marker options let's don't put markers there in other words don't put any points just plot a straight line so now that's more of what I'm uh, used to seeing and more what most people would be used to seeing is the regression line plotted as a straight line. 
for some reason, the individual points cover up the line in a certain part of the graph, and I'm sure there's ways to fix that. I just haven't uh, tried to figure out how to do it. So this is uh, basically what you will be needing to do to start with, is to just take a data set like this one, compute the uh, regression, and uh, understand you know, what the numbers that you're getting will be. So uh, go ahead and practice that with the data set that you're presided, uh, provided, and uh, that will be all for, for this lecture. Thank you. <coughs>